Hey everyone, it's Paul and Amber <laughs> and Alex back there. Hey Alex, say hello. Come on. He's hey, there. just you know, Alex only sometimes <laughs> likes me. I'm gonna have to start shipping him some treats, Amber. He'll take two said, weeks. There, you oh, see, oh, I said the word treats, and <laughs> boom, Alex, where treats? Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the mm -hmm. Profits Unlimited Weekly Update. You are with me, Paul and Amber, and the official mascot, the greatest mascot on Earth and soon to be on Mars as well, <laughs> Alex, uh, who's joining us. Um, and, and, and yeah, we mentioned treats and Alex is up and ready to go. The weekly update is where we answer your questions, answer stock questions, talk about the stock market, deal with anything that we can try to help you with. And this week, Amber, we have had a flood of questions on Ethereum cryptocurrency. And we are going to deal with that because there has been some confusion Ooh. and some complications yes. that we are going to deal with. And so we're going to lay that out uh, in full. And before we mention, before we do that, I want to mention that our predictions 2021 Bull Profits Special Edition Rocketing into the Future is on our YouTube channel. And if you have not yet received, make sure you are signed up for Bull Profits Daily. And that way you keep up with all the stuff that Amber, Patrick, Tamara, Nick, Ian and I put out amazing, incredible content that I believe without exaggeration that we can say you are getting from nowhere else. <laughs> yes. From nowhere else. Uh, nowhere else is covering all the things that you need. So Bold Profits Daily, essential reading daily. Please make sure you're subscribed to it. And then you will also get access to things like predictions 2021. All right. With that, we have had a number of questions, Amber, mm -hmm. regarding uh, Ethereum. So why don't you start with, with the, the question that we got and then we'll try to answer it. Yes, we've heard from Shelly, Mike, and Ed, and they have questions, Paul, regarding Grayscale Ethereum's trust, nine for one stock split. Um, they want to know, should they buy into it before or after the split? And if it's a bullish sign for ETHE? So, okay, so the, the, the stock split really changes nothing. Remember, when you're buying into ETHE, number one, what you're buying into is shares associated with a trust that owns Ethereum cryptocurrency. The stock split simply makes it a little bit less, as many people think of it, expensive to buy in the sense that each unit is now going to uh, be priced in a, in a lower amount. It changes nothing. The amount of Ethereum cryptocurrency in the trust is unchanged. Mm -hmm. So in the end, in the way that we look at it, it changes nothing. Uh, you can own more units at a lower price, or you can own um, uh, fewer units at a higher price. Nonetheless, it is the value of Ethereum cryptocurrency that is going to determine what happens with ETHE and in terms of its price appreciation. So focusing on stock splits, while very popular and quite interesting, and the focus of gossip and all of this stuff in the end has no impact ultimately on what is going to happen with respect to the price appreciation. So it uh, there is nothing special you should be doing or not doing as a result of stock split. Uh, and generally we are going to be taking out ETHE out of the portfolio once it has gone up uh, by some amount over our price because we have received far too many questions over far too many days, weeks, and months. And it has, to some extent, uh, extracted a lot of the resources of our team to answer this week after week after week. And so at some point in time, ETHE is going to be sold out of the portfolio which is why we have in last month's issue told you to please go read the special report on how to buy cryptocurrency and buy Ethereum cryptocurrency, either on Coinbase or on Robinhood. And we also, um, I don't know if we have questions on it, but yeah, let's go to the next set of questions on, on Ethereum and ETHE, Amber. Let's go to the next set. Of course. So Don just read your instructions on buying Ethereum with Coinbase, and he writes uh, that you do not mention a separate wallet. Is that correct? 
And also, Vishay uh, has a similar question and would like us to know that he's up $25,000 since subscribing to Profits Unlimited uh, from the last two to three months, and it's going very well. Well, uh, the discussion about wallets and stuff are very technical and are really unnecessary with respect to what we have put in the special report in the sense that Coinbase, as well as Robinhood, they take care of all of that. You never need to be concerned with all that. And generally speaking, if you're putting so much money in that you're concerned with all that, that is outside of the parameters of what Profits Unlimited is going to be able to do. We charge $50 to $100 per year. And generally speaking, what we do is generalized guidance in terms of how to do it from there. If your amounts of money are so significant, then I believe that you may need to consult with somebody that uh, that can give you that kind of guidance. However, generally speaking, if you open up a Coinbase account and buy Ethereum cryptocurrency, it's pretty obvious in terms of where it sits. There's nothing you need to do once you buy it. They've taken care of all of that. And the same is true for Robinhood. So I'm unclear as to what this question actually means. Um, and of course, we thank you for your compliments with respect to having made money. Always a thrill for us to know that we are helping you get to where you want to get to in terms of your financial goals. All right, Amber, all right, Amber let's go to the next one. Yes, Bernie from El Segundo, California, wrote us to let us know that he has a nice 50% profit on ETHE and will hold on until you recommend selling it all. Um, quote, it's definitely pays to listen to your weekly broadcasts and to follow your investment ideas and to purchase as many of your recommendations as possible. And as a subscriber, he writes uh, to Profits Unlimited, True Momentum and Paul's Secret Portfolio, my cumulative returns and my two brokerage uh, trading accounts is well over a hundred and fifty percent a fantastic return in three years i'm retiring in june of 2021 and will greatly enjoy my additional wealth to have a wonderful retirement thank you all so much <laughs> nice. and we are thrilled for you i like to say that the stock market or even investing in general is a means to an end to a better life mm -hmm. i know there are some people that are trying to maximize their wealth that's never been my philosophy I've always felt that the purpose of investing is ultimately to lead a better life, to be able to afford some of the things that you might never have had a chance to do, to do some of the things both for yourself, for your loved ones, for your family, for your friends that they may not be able to afford and perhaps you might have never thought you could do. So we are thrilled that we have been able to help you out with respect to your retirement. Now, with respect to ETHE, as I mentioned earlier, we have gotten so many questions over so many months on this particular stock that we have switched. We are now requiring that you, that if you want to have continued access in the future to the upside that is represented by the Ethereum cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. that you will need to buy the Ethereum cryptocurrency by reading our special report on how to buy cryptocurrency, opening up either a Coinbase account or Robinhood account and getting exposure that way. And we've received a number of questions recently from people after reading uh, the monthly issue that have gone and bought ETH in the stock market, which gives you access to a completely different stock. I just want to make it clear that that is wrong. That is completely wrong. We are telling you to buy the cryptocurrency. For that, you will need to make sure you go and read the special report Follow those instructions very carefully, very clearly. Otherwise, you are going to have exposure to a stock that is not in our portfolio and is never going to be supported in our portfolio. And so it is ultimately up to you. You do have to read things carefully. I know a number of people simply scan through our monthly issues, go and look at a ticker symbol and just simply go buy it. And in this case, it will have caused you to, bought in, to buy into the wrong thing. We do have a note going out today clarifying all of this. Nonetheless, the responsibility does sit on you to make sure that you are reading our monthly issues in full. If you're simply scanning for ticker symbols, a mistake like this can happen. And I believe that this is what has happened. A number of people have simply gone and looked at the ticker symbol 
and not understood that we were referring to the cryptocurrency that you can only buy on Coinbase, you can buy on, on Robinhood. Uh, however, even on Robinhood, you would have to make sure that you were buying the cryptocurrency. So please, if you have made this mistake, please undo this mistake. And if you still want exposure to the Ethereum cryptocurrency, please very carefully Read the special report on how to buy cryptocurrency, which is accessible in our website on our special report section. Read it two or three times if you need to. Go and follow those instructions very precisely. And then you will now own Ethereum cryptocurrency because we are ultimately going to sell out of ETHE because so many people have objected to it. So many people have complained about it. So many people have asked the same question so many times that it's consumed too much of our resources to be able to really support this particular stock in our portfolio. So once it has gone up appreciably over where it currently sits in terms of cost, we are going to sell it out of the out of our portfolio. So please, I would tell you to be aware of that and to make plans to buy the Ethereum cryptocurrency in in your in your Coinbase or Robinhood account. All right, Amber. With that, let's go to the next one. Yes, our next question is from Carol. Uh, Carol is a new investor and she loves your weekly podcasts and your enthusiasm, Paul. Uh, she feels you're, take, you're actually talking directly to her and that gives her confidence. Um, she has a similar question on three positions in a portfolio. Um, first, should she keep holding a Slack, ETHE, and Teladoc Health uh, through the volatility or should she sell? Well, Slack, we have uh, actually sold out of the portfolio after it received a bid from Salesforce, and we have sent you an email asking you to sell that. And I believe from our recorded cost, we uh, generated a gain of something like 25, 26% mm -hmm. in just a tiny number of months. So that is officially out of our portfolio. And once again, I have to ask you to make sure that you are paying attention I'm aware that we send out a lot of emails. However, it is critical that you pay attention to when we tell you to buy or sell things because that is our official communication to you. And if you miss a sale uh, or you miss a buy, uh, it can, can be because you're not paying attention to the emails that are coming through. And the second thing is that everything is in our portfolio until we officially send you an email telling you that we are selling it out of our model. So, you know, one of the philosophies that we have is that we have the strong hands philosophy. We stick through volatility. And the way we address volatility is by following the rules of the game, which is that you own a number of positions. We say in Profits Unlimited, a minimum of five positions. That's the absolute minimum, 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 minimum floor rather than the maximum. And so that will allow you to sit through volatility, whether it be in Teladoc and Zoom or any of the stocks where we've seen a lot of up and down movement. Slack, for example, Amber, was, I believe, down as much as 20% from the time we put it. Nonetheless, we were able to get a gain of an excess 25% in well under a year. So stock prices always move up and down because of big moves that are made by institutional investors. Sometimes when they buy in in bulk, they shoot the price up. Those are gains in your portfolio. When they want to sell in bulk, well, wholesale prices are always lower than retail prices. And that gets registered in the stock market and you experience that as volatility, as losses. Nonetheless, if the stock is something that is going to be continued to be bought because it's a good business, because it represents a scarce asset, now, as buyers come in, they're going to bid the price higher, and those are gains in our portfolio. And that is how we make money through, through the stocks that we hold. Mm -hmm. So everything other than Slack is continues to be in our portfolio. However, I would tell you that it, ETHE, which is the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, which is shares in a trust that holds Ethereum, is going to be sold out of our portfolio once we make I'd say 20 or 30%, we are going to sell it out because we have gotten too many questions uh, and we've had to deal with it too often. And so it's easier for us to recommend the actual cryptocurrency. And that is what we have done starting with this month's issue. Please make sure to read the special report on how to buy cryptocurrency. Please make sure to go and read in full 
what we wrote about buying the cryptocurrency. Please never assume that just because you see a ticker symbol that this is something that is only in the stock market because we are now officially buying cryptocurrencies in our model portfolio. And we are sending a special email out telling folks that perhaps did the wrong thing to undo it and make sure to do the right thing. All right, Amber, next stop from here. Next question from here. Yes, our next question is on 3D systems. So Rod read that GoProto just acquired DDD um, when he at the time of this email. And he wants to know, is this true? Well, that's clearly untrue. And, and, and I can say that we track all of our stocks daily and we would know. Uh, generally speaking, uh, my, my daily routine is to wake up somewhere between 5.30 and 6. And then I go through a process of looking through all the news that are there. And generally speaking, if there is an acquisition, we will tell you about it. And then we'll tell you what our sense is about it. And generally speaking, most of the time, we sell and take the money on the first or first day or in the first week. And for sure, we can tell you that uh, 3D Systems is still publicly traded. It's still trading. It's still out there and no one has bid for it. And there is no acquisition of 3D Systems that is happening or is going to happen as far as anything that we are seeing. All right, Amber, let's go to the next question. Yes, our next uh, set of questions are from Mark and Josephine. Hello to you both. Um, they have similar questions. Uh, Josephine writes, hi, Paul and Amber. I just sold my Zoom shares this morning in response to another newsletter writer's opinion that the stock is way overvalued. Um, Mark actually pronounced Zoom a toxic stock and poised to crash uh, precipitously. Um, now, tonight, I see your recommendation of Zoom as a stock uh, that is going to make a uh, difference going to go the distance. So what's an investor to do? Well, uh, as I say, when I get asked these questions, um, uh, we have no ability to respond to what other people think. We do our work and we come up with our recommendations to our model portfolio based on our understanding, our knowledge, our experience. And so you have to reconcile if you're reading 10 people, 12 people, and putting all those thoughts into your head, ultimately you have to reconcile who you want to follow. We have no ability to sit there and respond really to every person that might have a different opinion than ours. On any single stock, there's gonna be hundreds of opinions. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to try to wait for when everybody agrees with each other, that is generally never going to happen, except at the very tippy top of markets when everybody's all in, everybody's in agreement with everything, and that generally is the worst time to invest in either any single stock or in the market in general. Also, I like to say you cannot captain a ship in 30 different directions. You got to pick a direction. And if you're going to follow us in a stock and you need to follow us, you're going to follow someone else on that stock, then that's who you're going to follow. We still like Zoom. We still believe that this is going to be one of the biggest platforms uh, in terms of dominating how so many things are done, everything from work, social events, even telemedicine, and we believe that the future is bright. Other people clearly disagree. You will have to choose and decide who you want to follow. We obviously believe in our research, our understanding, and that's what we are going to stick with. And that is why Zoom is still in, in our portfolio. And we believe we are going to make an enormous, phenomenal amount of money as a result of holding it. All right, Amber, let's go to the next one. Yes, so we have a question from Kevin and he writes, wow, what a great way to round out a crazy year. Um, you guys have really honed in on the industries that will define our future. And thank you for your diligence, your work, your entertaining ways of presenting it. Um, most Wall Street analysts are expressing bearish sentiment toward beyond meat. Uh, when I look at the numbers and the recent track record of reporting negative surprises around revenue and earnings forecasts, it's hard to get excited about it. Are you still BOP, uh, hashtag BOP, bullish, optimistic, positive on beyond meat? And if so, why? So we're still bullish, optimistic, positive on beyond meat. And the answer is partly the same thing as I said with, with Zoom which is that if you're going to want complete consensus, everybody to agree that it's only going to happen at two times, whether it be a stock or a stock market. In other words, if when everyone agrees, there's no more demand going to be left for the stock. In other words, there's nobody left to bid it higher. And uh, to some extent, analysts, you know, they're, they're, they, they are very conflicted in terms of what they do. Their investment banking operation is really what drives 
a lot of what investment banks make. So analysts can set the bar very high and then theoretically things disappoint that mm -hmm. can cause volatility. Then you come back three or six months later, the stock is 50, 70, 100% higher. And go look at every single stock we've made big money on, Tesla, AMD, Lululemon, Chipotle, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, people generally questioned us, were skeptical. Mm -hmm. However, thankfully, the vast majority of people have bought the stock and you've made money. I believe that's going to be the case with Beyond Meat as well. So we are still BOP, bullish, optimistic, positive on Beyond Meat. And let's go to the next one, Amber. Yes, next on Tesla. So Leslie from New Hampshire and as well as Anne, are wondering what to do with Tesla stock now that it's being added to the S&P 500. Um, what will happen to its value at that time or soon thereafter? Well, we're in on Tesla for a long time. We are going to continue to keep holding Tesla because there is so much more value that can unfold from their solar roofs, from their battery business, from mobility, from robo-taxis, and even from additional elements of their vehicle business. The semi still has not yet come out. The cyber truck has still not yet come out. I'm personally waiting for mine to show up. And so I'm super excited. So we, the movement around its inclusion, the S&P 500, mm -hmm. from our perspective is something that, yes, the stock is going to go up into that and may sell off a little bit. However, I would tell you to just keep holding it because I believe there's bigger gains ahead and we are still definitively BOP on Tesla because <laughs> we believe it represents the heart of America 2.0 and the heart of the fourth industrial revolution. And, you know, one of the ways of making money faster using many of the stocks that are actually in Profits Unlimited is through our amazing, incredible, rapid profit trader service that I work on with our phenomenal, incredible colleague, Ian Dyer. This year, Rapid Profit Trader has made people so much money. We have gotten so many emails from people talking about how this service has really hit home runs for them, making 20%, sometimes in a couple of weeks, sometimes 50% in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is a phenomenal, incredible service that uses the option market to make money that you might normally wait one or two years for through the stock market. You can do that in a matter of weeks yeah. using the option market. So if you're interested and you're the type of investor that likes making money through the option market, check out the details that are going to be in the email that this video is in on Rapid Profit Trader that I work on with our incredible colleague, Ian Dyer. So check that out. And with that, let's go to the next question, Amber. Yes, our next question is from Michael. He's writing from Bristol, Connecticut, home of ESPN. <laughs> so, hello, Strong Hands Nation. He writes, I've been a member of Profits Unlimited since December 2016, then later became a member of Extreme Fortunes and recently a member of True Momentum. Uh, because of all your recommendations, I've made more money over the last four years than I could have ever imagined possible. Therefore, because of my success, I felt comfortable retiring in May of 2020 right in the middle of the pandemic. In the past, I would always sell my stocks way too early because of false uh, articles that fools most of us without understanding what's going on behind the walls of Wall Street. Just something else you might want to share with the members, with all our members, um, since trading your recommendations and having my best month ever, I just hit the $1 million mark after starting with $600,000, but only working with $300,000 in the market. Markets. Never thought I would be able to say that. So I would like to give you and Amber a big thank you and Alex too. Ha <laughs> ha. So now my question. I saw that you can now purchase and hold Bitcoin inside your PayPal account. Will you be covering how to go about purchasing through PayPal? Michael, we want to congratulate you on this milestone of making it to a million dollars. Uh, we are all thrilled for you. We, of course, love, love hearing about your success. In the end, this is why I am here. Amber is here. Alex is here. The team is here to serve you uh, with all of our knowledge, our understanding. And that is ultimately our mission and our purpose, to serve you as best as we can. And we are thrilled, happy that you achieved this milestone and that you're retiring and want to wish you congratulations yes. from me and all of our team. Well done. Now, with respect to the answer to uh, whether or not we're going to add PayPal, 
just keep checking in. I believe once PayPal has determined that they're going to stay in this business and continue to provide this, as well as how they're going to do it stays the same, we'll look to add it. It may be in six months' time or so, but check in with us again. And with that, let's go to the next question, Amber. Yes, Stephen writes, uh, good afternoon, team. Uh, Fidelity is asking me to accept their designated investments agreement before purchasing GBTC. Why is such an acceptance necessary? And why is Fidelity making me agree before placing the order? Is it only due to the volatile nature of Bitcoin? Well, uh, when you're buying GBTC, you're buying shares in a trust that owns Bitcoin. So just be clear. You are not buying Bitcoin itself. GBTC is shares in a trust that owns Bitcoin. And as to why Fidelity is doing it, that is something that you would need to call their customer service and ask them why in terms of why they're doing it. My guess is they have various protocols and procedures, primarily because GBTC trades on the over-the-counter exchange, which is sort of a free-for-all. Uh, some of the things that trade there perhaps are a little bit of questionable value. And so when things trade there, they, it's made. Uh, there's an assumption made that everything there perhaps is something that you should be a little suspect of. And perhaps that's why Fidelity is asking you to do that. Nonetheless, I would tell you to call them because they're the ones that are setting those procedures and policies, and they will explain to you why they want you to do this. Yeah. All right, Amber, let's go now to, I believe we have a couple more questions uh, as well. Yep, we have a question on your blacklist. Uh, Paul, uh, actually, Bill writes, uh, please tell us how to view the many companies that you've published in your blacklist special report. Um, how urgent would it be to sell these stocks? If they are running up, should we just sell them as they begin to go down? So the blacklist is really provided as a courtesy. In other words, we have told you about something that we believe in, that we believe is unfolding right now. In other words, there's one world that is going away, America 1.0, and there is a new world that is sort of unfolding and now accelerating, especially in the year 2020. And I believe that acceleration is going to continue. That's the world of America 2.0. Mm -hmm. And I believe that America 1.0 companies, as I like to say, the destination is certain. I believe that it is zero, only the speed is unknown. In other words, it will happen first slowly and then suddenly, like what you are seeing with companies like Wells Fargo and ExxonMobil, where the charts of those stocks over many years just simply did this and then they had a waterfall decline. And that is what I believe is going to happen to the stocks on the blacklist. Exactly when all of these stocks are gonna do that, I have no real ability to tell you exactly. And so you will have to make your best judgments either by yourself, by reading more, getting more informed, or else perhaps working with a financial advisor and say, this is what I would like to do because I know many of these stocks provide dividends and many people rely on. And ultimately that's a judgment call that you have to make. And we would need to stay out of that because we are not your financial advisor. It is illegal for us to give you specific personalized financial advice, what we do is provide general stock picks and general guidance on how to use them. So uh, that's what I would uh, recommend to you. All right, Amber, let's go now to a couple more things uh, before we end uh, this update. Of course, we have a mailbag question from Austin. Uh, he's writing us from Ohio, and he asks how to find a website that tracks the 10-day moving average for stocks. <laughs> Well, no website is specifically going to only provide that. However, it is available everywhere. Yahoo Finance allows you to track any stock. And one of the things they allow you to do is set your own parameters for a moving average. And so you would need to spend a little bit of time around their charting feature and look and see where you can input 10 days and that would allow you to do it. I use stock charts, I use bar chart, uh, any number of our team, they end up using, there's trading view, there's any number of websites uh, that allow you to do it. Oftentimes your broker's website will allow you to do it. You simply go and put the ticker symbol in and they will allow you to put the uh, how many days you want in the moving average and it'll provide it to you. So it's totally up to you. You will need to do a little bit of work around the charting feature to figure it out. Mm -hmm. All right, Amber, let's do the next email. Yep, uh, Bob from Telequa, Oklahoma, <laughs> writes, it is with great humility and great regret that I confess to not fully following the rules of the game. Uh, since I'm investing with my retirement funds, I felt that preservation of capital was more important than possible gains. So I placed trailing stops 
on many of the 37 positions I have held that were recommended by your service. A number of them stopped out during the downturns. Some have since re I reinvested in. I've calculated the cost of doing this, and as of December 2nd's close, my portfolio is up just under 23%, not too shabby. However, had I had strong hands and held on through the rough periods, that same portfolio of stocks would now be up nearly 65%. In dollar terms, this has cost me over $20,000. Ouch. So keep impressing upon your subscribers to have strong hands. Thanks so much for your phenomenal service. Uh, thank you so much. I, 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 I'm sure that was a hard email for you to write. And uh, we take no pride in being right. We take pride in your success. We would like you to be successful, which is why we hammer away week after week on rules of the game. Stock prices are volatile. And one of the reasons why you get higher returns is because you endure through that volatility. All the people that sold out in the crash in March today are in all likelihood out of the stock market in full because the stock market moved so fast and our stocks moved even faster, there was no real chance to get back in. Now, the rules of the game are based on my experience, my understanding, and I have to be completely truthful. This has uh, come as a result of making every dumb mistake. I was the dumbest investor. I've made every dumb mistake. And that's how I came up with this rules of the game, which allows you to endure through volatility and allows you to make the big money, which always happens as a result of enduring through it. But thank you so much for writing that email and letting people know. All right, Amber, we've got one more. Yes, our last one for this week is Joe from Long Island. He sends his greetings to all of us, including Alex, and he writes, I don't know if you remember me. I'm the guy who wrote in many moons ago about AMD when it was struggling after I bought in and asked whether or not I was sitting on the golden egg that would not hatch. And you said to hold on. I tried, but sold. I am coming to you today with my tail between my legs. I bought it again and I'm up over 100%. So I'm a true testament to strong hands and how it works. I purchased uh, 3D Systems, Slack and Gilead. I held fast and seeing growth. I own a number of your other recommendations and I'm proud to say my portfolio is up about 88%. Thank you and your team for all your hard work. Enjoy the upcoming holidays. And then thank you to you for writing that email. Again, our our work is to try and help you. And I appreciate uh, you 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 uh, acknowledging uh, what, what you wrote in the email. And we are thrilled for you that you yourself, you have grown. You realized that the old way was no longer going to work for you. And you went back and bought in. So all credit to you for understanding and then for implementing it. It's always hard to do something new and to trust a system that you're unfamiliar with, that you're uncomfortable with. So kudos to you and well done to you. And uh, once again, we we beg you, plead with you, please read the rules of the game and consider using that as your system of using Profits Unlimited and all of our services. I believe that's our last uh, email to deal with, uh, Amber. I uh, do want to mention that people should look out for the email that is going to go out on ETH cryptocurrency, ETH cryptocurrency, which will be going out. All right, Amber, I believe that we're done. So you and Alex get to say goodbye first, and then I will say bye. Yes. Well, thank you so much for tuning in with us this week, everyone. We wish you a wonderful, healthy, productive week ahead. And this is Paul saying bye.